All right, top of the hour, and we're going to be very mindful of time because we have uh, six institutions that are going to share with you a lot of information in a very short six minute presentation. So welcome Brooklyn Technical High School to this session, this virtual college fair. Few things that you should know. If you would like to ask any of our panelists a question at any time, please utilize the Q&A button. It's either at the top or the bottom of your screen. Our panelists cannot see or hear you. So that Q&A button is gonna be the only way you get an immediate response during this 45 minute session. Uh, you can sign up for more sessions. We have more uh, this week uh, for this college fair and a recording of this, everything in that chat, which is gonna be really important. It's that contact information, everything in that chats, uh, everything in the Q&A and of course the video and audio will be available at strivescan.com. I'll throw that link into the chat as well. Uh, and being mindful of time, we're going to get started. Uh, we are starting with Quinnipiac University. Hi, everyone from Brooklyn Tech. My name is Kayla Dale. I am an admissions counselor at Quinnipiac University in Connecticut. I am going to share my screen here. I do have a PowerPoint presentation. And I'm, I'm going to run pretty quickly through it. So um, Quinnipiac University is located in Hamden, Connecticut. We're about 15 minutes outside the city of New Haven, about two hours, two and a half hours, depending on traffic away from Brooklyn, New York. Um, Quinnipiac is made up of three campuses. We have our Mount Carmel campus, which is home to our undergraduate students and where you'll take a host of your academic classes. Um, it's also right across the street from Sleeping Giant State Park. So it's a really beautiful, beautiful campus. Um, we also have our York Hill campus, which is about a mile down the road. There we have our housing for upperclassmen. So that's where you'll live as a junior and senior. Um, we also have our People's United States center and our Rocky uh, People's United um, Athletic Center for ice hockey and basketball. And then we also have our upperclassmen housing and our Rocky Top Student Center. Um, our North Haven campus, that is more of our professional and graduate school, if you will. So there is our Center for Medicine, Nursing, and Health Science Studies. Our law school and school of education is also located on that campus. State-of-the-art facilities, um, really great if you're looking to go into physician assistant, nursing, occupational therapy, physical therapy, you're definitely going to get the hands-on experience with those state-of-the-art technologies that we have available. And again, our law school and school of education is also located on that campus. Um, Quinnipiac University is a medium-sized institution, so we have 10,000 students, 7,000 undergraduate students, 3,000 graduate students in a 16 to 1 ratio. So for every 16 students, there's one professor. This is excellent if you're looking for a school that's not too big and not too small. We like to use the analogy that Quinnipiac is big enough for you to bump into familiar faces in the residence halls or in the dining halls, but also, you know, small enough or, or um, uh, big enough for you to meet new people every day. So it's really that great balance um, for, uh, we have about 24 students on average per class and our students are never taught by teaching assistants or graduate assistants It's our professors 100% of the time, which is really great. Um, at Quinnipiac, again, we have a number of things available for our students. We have over 140 clubs and organizations, 21 Division I sports. Ice hockey is one of our premier sports at Quinnipiac. We have club sports, which are new to the institution, intramural sports, Greek life, where um, that is more community service based. Students do not have any housing on campus for Greek um, organizations. And then there's a number of service and global community opportunities for students as well. At Quinnipiac, we have 58 majors, 48 minors, and 20 dual degree programs. Dual degree programs just mean you're able to attain your undergraduate degree and master's in Tatum, and you're accelerating the amount of time that you're spending in school and getting the most bang for your buck. So here are some of the dual degree programs that we have available. I'm not going to read through all of them. However, if you have more questions, please feel free to ask me questions in the chat. Um, for the dual degree program, students are invited to them. So all you would do is simply um, you would uh, apply to one of our majors. And once you apply to a major, we would then invite you to the dual degree program. So, um, so we have nine different schools available at Quinnipiac as well. And again, I'm not gonna read through all of them just for time sakes, but here are all our offerings. So Quinnipiac is no longer rolling admissions. Now we do have 
um, deadlines for students to follow. So our early decision deadline is November 1st, um, and that is a binding contractual agreement. So we would be expecting you to commit to the institution. Um, we have early action one, the deadline for that is November 15th, highly recommended for students who are applying health science studies and nursing to apply for that, health, no, that November 15th deadline. We also have early action two, the deadline for that is January 1st. And then we have regular admissions with the deadline for that is February 1. And if you look at our notification dates, um, students are typically hearing about a month out from when they are applying. And that is all for my presentation. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask questions in the chat section. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Next up, we have Goucher College. Okay. So hello everyone, and thank you all for being here. My name is Megan Steely, and I'm one of the admissions counselors at Goucher. Um, Goucher is a small private liberal arts college located just outside of Baltimore. We're about 20 minutes north of the city, really sort of the best of both worlds. So we have a 287 acre residential campus, very green, and yet we have a free student shuttle that takes you 20 minutes into the city. Um, we're also about an hour from Washington, DC, and about three hours or so from New York City. And there's also 14 other colleges and universities in Baltimore, so plenty of other college age students to interact with. Um, looking at the facts, we have about 1,300 undergraduate students, as well as about 700 graduate students that are primarily doing online programs. We have an 11 to 1 student faculty ratio with an average class size of about 15 students. So you get to know your professors and they get to know you. Most of our classes are discussion based. And for our school of our is diverse in a lot of different ways. So we have about 40% of our students that are students of color, about 40% are members of the LGBTQ community. We have students coming from 45 states and almost 50 different countries. About 30% are first generation students and about 30% are uh, varsity athletes. So there's not a cookie cutter Goucher student in any sense. When it comes to academics, Goucher has moved away from the traditional checkbox system of gen ed requirements and moved to interdisciplinary seminars. So this begins with the first year seminar where you are taking a class that really is of interest to you, whether related to your major or not. We have courses ranging from the secret life of puppets to where the wild things are that looks at the history of wilderness in the United States. Students will then take two complex problem exploration courses or CPEs. And with this, you are looking at one topic from a variety of different subject areas. So for instance, we have a course called Disease and Discrimination that looks at AIDS and diabetes from both a biological and a sociological standpoint. So you understand how the disease affects the body, but then also look to see about biases that exist surrounding people with the disease. So you really are seeing how complex this topic is and being exposed to different subject areas. We then have three areas of proficiency that we ask that students meet in data analytics, writing, and foreign language and culture, as well as two institutional commitments in race, time, perspective, and environmental sustainability. And these are themes and topics that you will encounter throughout your four years, both in your major classes and in your CPE courses. Speaking of majors, you have until the end of your sophomore year to declare a major. About a third of our students will come in undeclared, so that is totally fine if you don't know what you want to do. Um, most popular majors tend to be psychology, biology, international relations, and creative writing. Students will double major and minor and even create their own major. And in addition to all of these programs that are available as minors, we also have some standalone minors and concentrations, including our pre-med pre-health concentration and our secondary education concentration. Goucher also requires that all students study abroad. We've been requiring this since 2006, and students are either doing a traditional semester abroad where you enroll directly into an international university, or doing a three-week intensive course abroad that's led by Goucher faculty and looks sort of like those CPE courses, so they're interdisciplinary or thematic in nature. We send students to over 60 different locations around the world, and this really is something that becomes a part of the day-to-day -day conversations, both inside and outside the classroom. And now speaking of life outside the classroom, Goucher is a residential campus. About 98% of our students live on campus all four years, and housing is guaranteed all four years. 
All of our first year students live in the first year village, which is three residence halls that all surround the same courtyard, very intentionally built to foster community among our new students. So there's a lounge on every floor, a kitchen on every floor, um, and you really get to know all these other new students. Our Mary Fisher Dining Center has fantastic food. They cater to all sorts of dietary restrictions. We have a full kosher kitchen as well. We have over 60 different clubs and student organizations, so there is always something going on, everything from student government and a dance club to a bad movie watching club and a beekeeping club. 21 Division III athletic teams, and then events held through our Recreation and Wellness Center and our student engagement team. And then we also have the Center for Race, Equity, and Identity, CREEP. And so this is a space for students from various marginalized communities through pre-orientation programs and also events throughout the year, but it's also a space for everyone to learn. And looking after graduation, 96% of our graduates are either employed or pursuing further education within a year of graduation at some of the you know, big name universities and corporations across the country and internationally. But I do always like to point out that many of our students go on to work in the nonprofit sector as well. And then when it comes to applying, there are two ways that you can do that, either through the common application. We are test optional and have been test optional since 2006 with no application fee, or through the Goucher video application, where you essentially submit a two minute video introducing yourself and talking about how you see yourself thriving at Goucher. And either way, students are automatically considered and receive merit scholarships. So there's nothing additional that you need to do to receive these. These scholarships range from $12,500 to $35,000 each year and are based on your high school achievement. In addition to those merit scholarships, we also have the need-based aid through submitting the FAFSA, which about 97% of our students receive. Um, and that average financial aid package is over $37,000 per year. And just to wrap it up, um, we are currently open for on select days for in-person visits and driving tours every day of the week throughout our campus, as well as virtual opportunities. And if you have any other questions, I'm available in the chat. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next up, we have Harvey Mudd College. Oh, you're muted. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon or good evening, depending on, I guess you're all in Brooklyn, so all in the East Coast um, time zone. I'm Raisa Diamante. I'm the um, Director of Enrollment Strategies and Operations here at Harvey Mudd College. I don't have slides, so we'll just talk. And what you can see behind me is my uh, my background are actually just some key points about Harvey Mudd that I'll, that I'll address. Um, so Harvey Mudd is a STEM-focused liberal arts college located in Claremont, California, which is near Los Angeles. It's located on Tongva land. Uh, we are part of the Claremont Colleges Consortium, uh, where we are um, next to Pomona College, Scripps, Claremont McKenna, and Pitzer College. So our students have the opportunity to take classes at these other um, institutions. I'll talk about that in a little bit more. Um, for Harvey Mudd specifically, we are 900 students. We are fully undergraduate. Uh, there's no, there are no graduate students on our campus and that's pretty important for us. Uh, and we're 98% residential. We are a residential campus on purpose. Uh, demographically speaking, it's 50-50 in terms of folks who identify as, identify as male or female. Um, we are 45% domestic students of color. 15% of our students are Pell eligible. It's a similar number for our students who are first generation to college. Um, we have a great uh, resource called the I'm First resource that actually just got some national news. And I say all these things because we think it's really important that we have um, representation within our campus. Uh, at the blue there in the very top uh, behind me is actually our mission statement, uh, where we talk about uh, we wanting to, uh, seeking to educate mathematicians, scientists, and engineers well-versed in all of these areas, as well as the humanities, social science, and arts so that they can assume leadership in their field and really understand, understand how their work will impact society. So having, making sure that the, that the who's in the room, developing new tools, um, uh, creating um, technologies that can impact the world, we want that to be as representative as possible. Uh, I mentioned earlier, we're a liberal arts college school. So we really think of ourselves as the best of both worlds in terms of the liberal arts college experience and really the opportunities that you'd find at a research university. 100% of our students do research, 
Many students actually earn patents through our clinic program where you work with our um, with companies basically as a, as a project team. Um, but all of this starts with a broad foundation in STEM. Uh, it doesn't matter for us what area of STEM you want to major in, um, in the, uh, eventually, but for us, we, you need to be able to do our core. Uh, the core curriculum is three semesters. It's on, the first semester is actually on a credit, no credit system. You don't have grades on purpose because we really want you to learn how to work with one, in, one another rather than, rather than um, against each other. Your major you can declare after your first year. We actually don't allow you to, to, to declare until after your first year at minimum. Also important is that the fact that you take 30% of your classes in the humanities, social science, and arts, and you actually have to do a minor or what we call a concentration in something not in STEM. Uh, and writing itself is highly emphasized to our curriculum. So I mentioned earlier, we're part of the Claremont College Consortium. So we're literally a square mile across the street from one another. Uh, the Claremont College Consortium, the five colleges I mentioned, it's about 6,000 students altogether and about 2,000 courses. So really, though we're a campus of 900 folks on STEM, you have the resources and the activities and the courses you'd expect from a mid-sized university. Uh, our community is guided by an honor code. Uh, it means, you know, privileges that, um, that before were quite new in the non-COVID world, but it means for us, for our students, all tests are take-home tests. They have 24-hour access to all, all our facilities. And they really do uh, watch out and look out for one another. As a highly collaborative and caring community, there's this no person left behind attitude. Uh, in fact, there's this mentality called the N plus one, meaning any number plus one. That's the, that's the amount of um, people that can be in a study group together, that can be in a dining hall table together. Again, not so COVID friendly, but, uh, but still really trying to say that there's, a, there's room for everyone here. And there's uh, clearly a culture of asking for help. Um, in terms of logistical things, we are a common application or common or coalition application school. Uh, we meet full need and are need blind in our admissions process. We have early decision, regular decision. All these details can be found on our website. Uh, uh, one detail that might be important for the junior class now is we will remain test optional for next year. So keep that in mind. As far as our outcomes go, uh, we have the second highest percentage of students who complete their PhDs in the STEM fields. This is out of all colleges and universities in the country. That's an important detail that we take pride in. Uh, each year, we also have more recruiters on our campus than students entering the workforce. Uh, and the most recent payscale.com college salary report uh, put our students as the highest salary earners. So, uh, so clearly, as a small school, we're quite a mighty one. And we believe that we truly have these great outcomes because we are part of this Claremont College Consortium uh, and because we are a STEM focused school that intentionally uses a liberal arts framework. If we just went on one route and not the other and didn't acknowledge the fact that our students really benefit from being part of the consortium, it would not be the strength that we are, that we have now. Our students know how to write, they know how to present their ideas orally, they know how to work collaboratively rather than, rather than competitively. They know how to work across disciplines and they're really excited for complicated and unfamiliar problems. Uh, and the, these are what we believe are the skill sets that our students uh, really thrive in and really allows them to be um, quite successful in the future. So, and they hone all of these skills while being the company of their people. Thank you for your time, folks. All right, um, next up we have University of Massachusetts. All right, thank you so much. And we're gonna jump from one consortium to another, one left coast to right coast or whatever. I love hearing about um, the Claremont Colleges so much. And it's actually a really rare treat that I get to be right after. So um, we will have a lot of fun with this. But my name is Carolyn Lorenza and I'm here from UMass Amherst. I wanna give a quick shout out to someone else here from UMass. I'm really lucky tonight that one of our current students from UMass is in the background um, in case anyone does have a question. If you wanna chat her, her name's Mary Lou. She's amazing. She's also from Brooklyn, so don't be shy. Um, I'm also a former Brooklynite, but uh, I love it up in Massachusetts so much that I think I will be here forever. <laughs> so let's see, where should we begin with UMass fun facts? Um, 
we are a big school. Uh, I love the group here today. You have such a nice mix of big and small and different types. We are a big university. We have about 24,000 undergrads at UMass Amherst. We have about 6,000 grad students. I was one of those grad students. I loved it. Um, and again, I came back to it. So I think that if you can check it out, you might love it too. We're in a wonderful area. Amherst, Massachusetts, about three to four hours north of you, depending on how you choose to get up here via, you know, public transportation or car, or what time of day, if you're driving, you choose to drive up. That will determine how long it might take you, but we're not far away. Um, and I still drive down all the time to the city and just like love being that close, not too close, not too far. Um, like I said, it's very beautiful up here. And another cool thing about Amherst is the other five college consortium, um, which is us and Amherst College and Smith and Mount Holyoke and Hampshire. So you might have heard of some of those or know them, or maybe you've come up to visit, but um, we do a lot together. It is a, a similar consortium feel. Um, that you heard about with Harvey Mudd and just the five of us together are so much stronger than any one of us alone. And it's an amazing thing to get those sort of five for the price of one. So we cannot recommend that, that vibe enough. And another fun thing is, of course, academically, there's a lot to choose from. I'll talk about some of the options in one second. But we are ranked number one in the whole country for our campus food for five years running. And that is something else to check out, something I miss very much working from home in the present moment. But our students are still getting to enjoy that food. So we hope everyone will get to try it as well. One more fun thing that I have to shout out about UMass. Uh, some recent news was we just won the national championship in ice hockey. So I know a few of us here love ice hockey. And so we were really psyched to um, win big this year and have that excitement in, in a pretty tough year otherwise. So it's fun here with, you know, a lot of fun stuff at UMass, but one of those things is the D1 sports and um, getting to watch the games and get, getting to have a couple of strong teams like that. So academically, again, we are big. So we try to break ourselves into smaller schools for you, similar to, you heard this from Quinnipiac too, but we have some similar colleges, um, smaller colleges within the bigger university. And so we have our College of Education, Engineering, Humanities and Fine Arts, where you'll find the Performing Arts, Liberal Arts, Languages, et cetera. We have Computer Science, our College of Natural Sciences, our College of Nursing, Social Behavioral Sciences, Public Health. We have our Eisenberg School of Management, really well known. Um, that's our School of Business. And of course, our Stockbridge School of Agriculture. Not listed is our Honors College because any major can be in our Honors College, but that's another special part of the university. So a lot to choose from academically, like I was saying, cost, and I know I'm speaking kind of fast, sorry, but you know we have to. Um, cost, we believe financial fit is such an important part of the search for you too. And UMass tends to be a pretty good deal for people, but we like to tell you upfront, here are some price tags. Very few people are paying the full price tag. Um, as you'll hear from so many of us colleges, you know, again, we all have need-based money to give you and also um, merit money to give you. But you will see that at UMass, being a state school out of state, the price tag, if you were to pay full, is higher than you might see at SUNY, for example, um, and we try to even that out more for you through giving all of our merit money to our out-of-state students. Um, don't tell the in-state students, but yes, no, just kidding. That is that is the truth. And so it hopefully can be a financial fit for many people. Um, but let us know. We can walk you through some options for you if you're looking at it. And I'm not sure, honestly, I'm, I think I'm out of time, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of contact info and say that we'd love for you to come visit us. We're hoping to be open for um, in-person tours um, for you pretty soon. And um, we're currently trying it out right now and it's going well so far, knock on wood. And uh, no matter what happens, you can always reach me and Mary Lou and other people like us behind the scenes. So just feel feel free to email us anytime and all that good stuff. And thanks for having us. All right, thank you. Uh, next up we have Union College. All right, good evening folks. I am uh, going to stop others from screen sharing and
All right, so thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Michael Moore. I am the, the rep that you'll see visiting Brooklyn Tech and all other schools in Brooklyn. Uh, and I just wanna say that when we talk about Union College, it might strike you as, uh, as a surprise, but uh, as a small liberal arts college with a heavy STEM uh, balance, uh, we talk about the power. So we're 2,200 students strong, uh, tons of different opportunity. Uh, we're in a great location that uh, is connected to New York, which is about three hours north of you by car. Uh, again, this is based on when you leave, uh, what time of day you leave. Uh, and if you take Amtrak out of New York City, uh, that'll put you on our campus in about three and a half hours. Uh, there's a stop over in Albany. We're 20 minutes from Albany by car, uh, but Amtrak sees the need to stop there for like 35 minutes or whatever it is uh, before they come over to Schenectady. So if you think about Union College, and what we talk about is the power of union. Uh, we like to begin with uh, connection. So with 2,200 students, you can almost imagine that uh, you will absolutely know every one of your faculty members. Uh, that's no surprise to anyone. Uh, our faculty take pride in knowing the students uh, by first name, like within the first week of classes. And if you think about it, Union College being on a trimester system, we have, uh, let's see here. Being on the trimester system, we have uh, 10 week sessions, 10 week terms, three 10 week terms every uh, every year. Students take three to four classes and that puts them in a position to take uh, at least 36 credits or courses in the course of the four years. And that's the requirement to graduate. And what our trimester offers, uh, in addition to those really intense, really uh, deep dive type of conversations with faculty, with your students, with your peers. It offers you a time to have the flexibility uh, to take courses that might not necessarily be in your, your, uh, your major. Uh, we talk about that as the power of integration. Students can take courses across disciplines. Students are not required to, obviously, but about 82% of our students will study uh, in interdisciplinary type of programs. They're engineers with a philosophy major or they do or with a philosophy minor or they do theater and music with a, uh, a combination of economics and finance. So a lot of these programs when we talk about integration is centered on uh, student interest. It's centered on uh, making sure that our students are prepared to lead and address and solve major problems, small problems, uh, problems big and large in different types of environments. So integration is really important for us. Uh, you'll see us talk about uh, again, that deep dive, the intensity of the program, how you actually shape and tailor your major uh, or the majors that you combine to make one. So we talk about that as organizing theme. Uh, a lot of students arrive on campus from, from uh, different parts of the country, different parts of the world, and they have different talents. They have different passions, different interests. We don't think that your first year in college or even your second or fourth year is the time that you have to bury any of those interests. We wanna make sure that you have the opportunity to overlap, to do deep dives, to combine those interests or those themes that govern how you view the world uh, into a major that's satisfactory to you, that's designed to put you in a position st to start the type of career that you're looking forward to. So when we talk about immersion, you'll see that uh, all of our students have access to research. Uh, it's kind of required. So in your sophomore year, you will do a sophomore research seminar or SRS, we call it. Uh, and every student does that. And that's to give you the opportunity to get exposed to uh, real research environment, platform enterprise. Uh, we talk a lot about the power of inclusion. So every student on our campus uh, that arrives on our campus is expected to participate. I mentioned the power of connection. Uh, and that's nice, that's perfectly fine if students arrive on our campus and feel connected. But we also want them to feel like that, uh, that resume that they submitted to us in the application process or that, uh, that list of activities that they listed, that you bring that with you uh, so that you can share those with campus, share those with your peers and faculty and staff. It is a community of learners, uh, of scholars. So when you arrive on our campus, you can rest assured that there's every expectation that you'll be uh, accepted and expected to participate. And it doesn't always have to be the exact type of uh, involvements that you had in high school, right? We want you to at least bring that energy, bring that spirit to try to move out of comfort zones and to challenge yourself. 
come to our campus. Uh, we'll take good care of you, obviously. Uh, we'll make sure that uh, you can grow into that, uh, that genuine, authentic person that, that you're destined to become. Uh, and we follow in every student model. So Union College prides itself on preparing leaders who can lead with wisdom, empathy, and courage. Uh, and it's an every student model. That does not mean you'll see, uh, we have a division one hockey program, for example. That doesn't mean that every student can play division one hockey. Uh, what it means is you will have the opportunity if you're that good, uh, you will have the opportunity to play hockey. You will have the opportunity um, uh, to do an internship. There are about 50 different internship partners within walking distance of our campus. Uh, there's about 500 globally that we connect with, but uh, it's a, uh, the every student model is a promise that you will have that opportunity, that access, encouragement, and sometimes nudged, and, if not shelved, into opportunity to have a, a robust and transformative experience at Union College. And the multiple tomorrows piece um, is exemplified by the different types of problems we can never anticipate, right? If you think about how we are operating right now uh, during a pandemic, uh, Union College has been open uh, all year. Uh, since fall term, we've managed uh, and had great support and buy-in from our students who are training, right? This is an act of training for attacking problems small and large for multiple tomorrows. Uh, we're anticipating that we'll be open again uh, in the fall, uh, pretty close to business as usual, as long as the, uh, the virus allows. Uh, but we certainly had a good hold in managing and great buy-in from our students with our testing protocol as well as uh, vaccination. So, um, as far as admissions, we operate on a holistic type of review process. Obviously, we want you to interview if you can, uh, if you desire. Uh, we want you to visit campus. We are open for visitors. Check our website. You can visit. Uh, we have Saturdays as well as uh, weekdays that are available and even Sundays, believe it or not, that you can come on campus uh, and get a tour. For students who are, are interested in financial aid, uh, Union College is one of those that meets 100% of demonstrated need, uh, in addition to merit awards that we offer, merit awards up to $25,000. So when you submit your application, uh, we anticipate that you'll also submit your FAFSA and your CSS profile if you anticipate receiving any need-based aid. If you're only interested in merit aid, then by all means, uh, you can just submit your application and we'll accept that uh, as it is. So. Thank you again. Uh, I apologize for, for speaking really quickly, uh, but I hope you got that. And obviously, if there's any questions, I'll hang around with the rest of us and, and answer them. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next up, we have Virginia Commonwealth University. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Timothy I'm Thurston. I am here representing Virginia Commonwealth University. Um, I am going to share my screen right now as well. Let's get this thing going. <laughs> All right, so uh, so yeah, welcome. So my name is Timothy again, representing Virginia Commonwealth University. VCU is a uh, public um, research institution, lo institution located in Richmond, Virginia. Um, we are a space of diversity and inclusion for all of our different types of students that come to VCU. We're one of the most diverse institutions in the state of Virginia, and uh, we are also located in the capital city of Richmond. As I said before, Richmond is, a, is the capital city. Um, we have about 150 community partnerships in the Richmond area um, and, and without and and, out, and surrounding areas. Um, we have uh, eight Fortune 500 companies, um, about 50, 550 um, acres of, of uh, different types of um, opportunities outside of just being an urban campus. But if you're interested in the parks and you're interested in recreation, being outside, if you're interested in trails and uh, being near the river, uh, VCU has a lot of access to nature and things of that nature. And also we are two hours, um, um, from Washington DC, North Carolina, the mountains and the beach. So we are kind of centrally located, which is really kind of cool for students to kind of have access to those spaces. At VCU, uh, we are not considered a small institution. Uh, we have about 29,417 students altogether at VCU. 
um, right now. So um, it is not a smaller institution, but we're not considered huge either. Um, the average class size is about 28 students in a class. So even though the class, the school is a little bit larger, um, the class size is still a little bit smaller. Um, we do have larger lecture settings as well that you will probably experience when you attend VCU. Um, those are like larger, like a history or maybe a larger um, a science type of lecture type of course. Um, and those would be anywhere from 75 to 300 students in a class, but pretty much on average, your classes will be um, about 28 students or less, depending upon what your major. A lot of times your class will be a lot smaller than that once you get into your majors. Um, your major, major courses. 18 to 1 is the student to faculty ratio, as you see before you on this slide. Now, at BCU, when you do apply to BCU, um, we um, like to look at everybody's application holistically. So we're looking at the full picture of each student. We don't like to look at any student as being an average student because we have students coming from all different, different walks of life, different parts of the world. And, and so it's just a lot of um, diversity at BCU. And so we look at your application holistically, meaning we're looking at everything that you send to us and not really comparing you to the next student, but really looking at what you are um, sharing with us in your application. So please be keep, it, keep in mind that. Um, November the 1st is our scholarship consideration deadline. If you're interested, um, students just need to apply through the Comet app and then they can automatically be in the running for our major scholarships. Those are the, the major like provost, dean, and the, um, and the presidential scholarships. Those are like the largest amounts of money. So students who want to apply to VCU and want to be in the running for those scholarships, you should apply by November the 1st. January the 15th is our regular decision deadline for applying. So you, that's a plenty of time in between that. If you do not apply by November the 1st and you um, doesn't mean you're not in the running for any scholarships, we do have other scholarship opportunities. And being that a lot of these, obviously um, all of the students here are from out of state. Um, so, and I'm actually in Brooklyn too, by the way, just so you know, I'm a regional admissions person. Um, but um, all of our, um, because you're coming from out of state, there are other scholarships as well. So there's an out of state scholarship for students who apply and, and a lot of our students who uh, get, have a certain GPA automatically receive a scholarship if they're from out of state. So just keep in mind that there are other scholarships as well. And we really want to attract students from um, different parts of the world um, and from different states. We are, um, I guess if you're driving to Richmond, we're probably about um, six and a half, seven hours um, from um, New York, depending upon, again, as someone said before, depending upon the traffic, really, traffic is a big thing, but uh, we definitely have, um, uh, we're not too, too far. You can get there by a plane. We have our, uh, our own um, airport. Um, we also, um, you can also get there by bus. You can get there, of course, by driving as well and by train. As far as like average student GPA, just so you know, and a lot of students do ask this, a 3.39 to a 4.06 is our average kind of range of where our students um, um, landed um, when they applied into VCU this past year. And then our SAT scores were around a 16, well, 1060 to a 1250. Of course, this year with COVID, we were test score optional for all of our students because of COVID. And next year we will, um, we will evaluate that as well. We're not sure if that's gonna be the case, but we will definitely um, put that information online. As far as academics, VCU is definitely a space where there's a lot of different options. Again, diversity, 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 that's what we're about. So we have students who come to VCU because they're definitely interested in medical professions. We have a medical school, we have um, nursing, medicine, um, physical therapy. Then we also have people interested in business majors, a wide variety of different er areas and business to go into. Um, we have students interested in engineering, engineering majors as well. Um, we have also a very strong art program, one of the premier arts institutions in the United States. And we're very excited about those programs that we offer um, for students in art. And that's something that you wanna think about. Um, then BC was a place you might want to look into. So anything from sculpture to animation to um, what else? Fashion design to dance. So there's a wide variety of different things really um, all over the place when it comes to art. And then also we have majors in education. We have majors in uh, different sciences. Um, the undeclared and you can probably find what you're looking for um, when you get to the university. We are, of course, um, our campus is um, in the heart of Richmond, you know, the actual campus itself, but we are a campus with no boundaries. So we do have partnerships and opportunities. We have an actual, uh, speaking of art, we have a um, School of Arts in Qatar, which is a space where um, students who are art students can go um, overseas for a period of time and they can stay in 
Cutter. So that's a great opportunity. We also have studied a lot of great study abroad opportunities at VCU as well. So just a lot of a wide variety of opportunities in general for all of our students. So um, there's some phone numbers here. You can contact us if you have any questions. You can email us as well. Again, my name is Timothy Thurston. It was a pleasure speaking with you. And I'll turn it back over to Christy, right? Yes, thank cool. you. All right, so I'm going to ask everyone to turn their cameras on and we're going to go in the same order that we presented. Uh, starting with Quinnipiac. Hi, um, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. One word of advice that I would um, give you during this college process is that you really want to make sure that you do your research. Um, take this time to check deadlines, know when those deadlines are, um, know a little bit about the program that you're applying to. I can't tell you how many times students just reach out for basic information. And while I don't mind having the conversations with students, you also want to do your due diligence and show that you are serious serious about the institution that you're applying to. Thank you. Hi again, everyone. So my biggest piece of advice would be to make sure that the school that you are deciding to go to and the schools that you are looking at are actually schools that you yourself are interested in and not schools that you feel pressured to be looking at from your family or your friends or other classmates. So, you know, make sure that the places that you are looking at are actually places that are interesting to you. Hi folks, Risa again from Harvey Mudd. Uh, my one piece of advice is probably, um, honestly, it, it, this is still, it's a process, um, the colleges, the, the goal after the four years, but there's still your senior year, there's still the rest of your junior year. Um, so I, I'd say, you know, stay a high school student, not a college student, because you're not quite there yet. So stay present, uh, keep those relationships going, uh, and it'll just help center you as you make that ne next transition. I dropped some info here for Harvey Mudd in the, the chat there. Uh, so feel free to stay in touch. Would love to be able to, to do that with you all. My one bit of it. Oh. oh, should I go first? Ah, <laughs> UMass before Union, I guess. Sorry, um, it's Carolyn from UMass again. I just wanted to say really quickly that I think my one piece of advice is when you see all of us on, you know, Zoom and randomly, you know, even if we get to meet in person and all that, just remember that we're all humans on the other side, as hard as this gets and as hard as, much of almost like a different language as it can feel when you're filling out that common app or the coalition app or you're just in this just know that we've all been there um and we kind of do this work because we actually care about you even though we can't see you in zoom and we do want to help you so i think um yeah just kind of i guess just that can take a little bit of the stress out of it to know that there are humans you know reading your app and and back here too. So good luck to everybody. Thanks for having us. I'll also put my email in the chat too. I was actually trying to jump the gun because those of us toward the end, we act, we have to dig a little deeper because everybody takes the, uh, thanks Megan. And usually I, I tell students to, to be selfish about it. Kind of what, what, what Megan was saying, my colleague here. Uh, but I will add to that. And this might seem a little strange at this point because you, you know, uh, my daughter used to tell me when her junior year that it felt like the weight of the world was on her shoulder. So I had to remind her, have fun. Like you're going to learn a lot of new things, some interesting facts, uh, some great history and even like technological uh, discoveries that were made in all of our regions and contributed to, to this uh, wonderful place that we live in. So take advantage of that and be sure that once you start to visit campuses, right? take your cameras um, and record those visits and have fun, get some of the food at these different places on campus as well as off campus. So uh, have fun uh, and be a little bit selfish about how you go about it. Uh, those are my, my bits of info. All right, Michael, that was uh, some good information there. <laughs> um, I feel like we're like in tag team in this thing. So um, <laughs> uh, but on, on the real, uh, I would say, uh, there's so many things I could say, but I will definitely say that um, one of the things I usually tell students to do is just to try to take a deep breath um, and just stay open in the process because um, we don't, um, you know, it's not always um, about knowing 
exactly what you want to do and where you want to go, but just being open to the process of seeing what's available and what really speaks to you. So it's good to kind of take the time and look, go to, go to events like this to find out about these schools and ask the questions. We are here to answer any questions that you have. Just stay open in the process. Um, and I'm sure that you you will find some type of school that will be some school that will be the, uh, the right school for you. And, a, and a, also with that, I do recommend that once you get to that point where you are a, looking into the schools and you're interested in certain schools that you do try to make that that step and that leap to actually go study it go in person and, and get to see what that campus is really like before you make that decision and my information is in the chat area as well if you have any questions all right thank you uh awesome advice from our experts uh my last plug is to reach out to these folks this is what they do they want to make sure that they can find the right fit for you so all of their contact information is accessible there in the chat but it's also going to be uh, on the recording at StriveScan's website. And when you leave here, there's a quick four uh, questions that you just need to answer, a little survey, and sign up for more sessions as there are more fairs this week for this particular virtual fair for the school. So thank you again to everyone watching uh, right now or watching this recording. And thank you to our experts, our panelists, and stay well and good luck.